I met Jerry in the uh, late 80s. I was involved in recruiting him. I think that when we recruited Jerry, we were delighted that he came to Michigan and he really changed the culture here. Well, my favorite thing about Jerry was that uh, he was very proud of being an old school type of professor, you know, and uh, he was very different than uh, modern professors, but uh, he really took pride in, um, in doing things his way. He wrote all of his papers with a number two pencil on white paper. Secretaries typed them up. He always did them right the first time, and so he didn't have to correct them. And then he uh, published a lot of good work that way. I graduated from Penn State in 1969 as an undergraduate, so I officially started with Jerry uh, the summer of 1973. I ended up being his fifth uh, PhD student. What Jerry was noted for was uh, uh, getting things done uh, to a schedule and um, attention to, uh, to detail. You know, Jerry made you toe the line and, and made your work, but we all had a lot of fun, a lot of fun doing it. I am proud to be one of Jerry's students and probably doubly proud to be one of the early ones. I received a postdoctoral diploma from the University of Michigan. My PhD was from Penn State. So I was one of the students who moved with Jerry from Penn State to Michigan. We had the uh, great fortune to move Jerry's laboratory with him, uh, four students moved, and then he convinced the University of Michigan that uh, we were going to be an asset, that we can establish the laboratory, and then we became postdoctoral student. I met him in 1985. One of the things I really liked about Jerry was that he was very punctual and he was very thorough. That may not be a favorite thing because he expected everybody to, be, to do the same. I joined UM in 1988 and I think on my very first day I, I met Jerry and I saw Jerry. Uh, we were in the old uh, aerospace building and I recall I met Jerry, he was uh, puffing a, a, a pipe uh, walking down the corridor and he greeted me and then uh, I joined the so-called experimental uh, aerospace engineering group and Jerry was the de facto head of the group and Jerry was a tough taskmaster but he, he really looked after us. Jerry and his uh, beautiful wife uh, Mary Ann they used to hold uh, TGIF thank God it's Fridays at their home and I, I really you know fondly remember those days uh, where the group was a very cohesive group and we got, to, we, you know, we got along with each other very well. I was a student of Aerospace Engineering Department from 1989 to 1992. Professor Faith was a very nice gentleman and a great mentor. I learned a lot from him. I also learned about his passion to dessert. He, always, he told me no dinner is complete without dessert. So even nowadays, when I have dessert, I always think about him. Being a student of Professor Face was a resounding experience, one of the best in my life. I knew he was a really good uh, professor from back home in, in, uh, when I was in Egypt. And my professor over there told me, this guy is a legend, you are very lucky to work with him. I remember we used to have one hour meeting every week. So every single meeting, I would come out from his office and in my way back to the second floor where my office is, I would tell myself, this must be the best professor in the world. I need to be uh, the best student in the world also to deserve to be his student. He, he was really uh, a very nice person and very kind to us. So Jerry was always a very strong supporter of the various professional organizations, the AIAA, so aerospace, and the American Society of Mechanical Engineers. He was always somebody you could rely on for presenting and for contributing his leadership at the meetings. Jerry was a great role model, friend, mentor. He was a wonderful person, uh, really helped my career. He was instrumental in setting me on a really good path. So I love Jerry and I miss him dearly to this day. The person who's been most influential to me is the late Professor Jerry Faith. Jerry uh, was a titan in his field, without a doubt, very respected. Uh, feared by many people and uh, he took me under his wings uh, pretty early on. Uh, he was actually the person who helped shepherd my promotions through. Uh, he was a casebook committee chair for both my promotions 
to associate with tenure and then to full. And I viewed him very much as a mentor and uh, I sort of emulated some of the things that I did based on uh, the way I saw how he operated and the leadership he had in the department and in the university. I came to the University of Michigan in 1999. Jerry was the only other endowed chair professor in addition to me. And we had adjacent offices and uh, we both would come in early so we became friends. The thing that was most impressive about him as far as I'm concerned, was that every day, no matter how cold it was, 5 o'clock or 5.30, he would take his briefcase and he would sit in his office with a jacket and a tie and walk out. No hat, no glove, no coat, no matter how cold it was. So I developed this image of Jerry, that he's a man of steel. He always used to say, don't wait for the brightest idea that will change the world. The brightest ideas come to those who keep making an effort. He was an avid Penn State football fan. After about 15 years at Michigan, he said, Jim, what's wrong with your football team? And I said, Jerry, you've been here 15 years. Uh, Michigan is your football team. He goes, no, 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 Penn State's my football team. He, he did become a, a Michigan uh, a um, professor and, a, and had loyalty to Michigan, but he, he never forgot Penn State. Professor Faith was like a father to me, and he always told us that we were like his children. And it's for this reason that on my wall here in my office at University of Maryland, I have pictures of my family, and right next to that, pictures of Professor Faith. Professor Faith also told us that the best job in the world was that of a full professor at a university, and that the best profession was seeking to understand Mother Nature through research. He didn't love all research, he hated doing calorim calorimetry, but everything else he did, he loved and he excelled in. Every time I study a new area, I find that he did some of the seminal work. Dr. Face was very uh, caring for students. You know, when you started, he would ask you, do you want to be a professor or you want to go to industry? And then he kind of tailored uh, your clear plan. He said, Lee, if you want to be a professor, you need to have thick skin. So I think that's the first lesson I learned from Dr. Faze. It's hard for me to say a few words. He and his family were very good friends for very many years, and I miss them greatly. I was furious with Jerry. I was ready to kill him. He did something that I thought was absolutely terrible. <laughs> I don't remember exactly what. I just remember feeling really angry. And I said, Jerry, why did you do this? And he just stopped absolutely cold. He was completely shocked. And I guess I was too. He just sat there and then he just said to me, because I had to. Well, that shut me up totally, and it was a big lesson that I learned is how to say when someone says, why do you, did you do something? I say, well, I had to. I remember I met Jerry in, in a combustion course, which he, he told in 1990. I still remember he always uh, visits the laboratory in the afternoon, they afternoon around 5 or 6 o'clock, and ask around all his uh, students uh, how things are going, any progress. Every Thanksgiving, he always invited all these uh, foreign students to have dinner with his family. And finally, I like him to rest in peace in the paradise. And Jerry, I'd like to say that I miss you. I had to go to a meeting in Maryland on uh, like a Monday and the last person I saw as I walked out of my office was Jerry, so I told him I'll be back on Wednesday. When the meeting started on uh, Tuesday, uh, Wei uh, stood up and he said, I have to make a very sad announcement. And he said, last evening Jerry Face passed away. And at the beginning, I mean, most of us couldn't believe that we heard it. But I, I really, for I really still miss him. Sometimes I, I really feel I should. He's still there in the next room.
Come on, then I can be.